Hi, in this video we're going to look at creating your first Android application. So after having everything set up and installed, you're going to open up Eclipse and we're going to go to File and New Android Project. Now if Android Project doesn't show up in here, then you want to go back and double check uh, your installation. Maybe just uh, closing and reopening Eclipse might get everything together that it needs to to find and if it still doesn't show up then go back through step by step and make sure that you have included everything in the setup process. So we're going to continue by going to Android Project and uh, this walks us through a step by step wizard to create our project. So we're going to give it a name and we're just going to say hello Android. Now it's uh, before we continue on with this you want to make sure you check the spelling in here because it's um, if you decide to change this it can be cause problems throughout the rest of your project so always check your project name before continuing. So we're going to do a new project in our workspace and the default location for the workspace that we set up during the environment setup. So it's going to default to go there. And then I'm going to click Next. And here it is asking us what our targets are going to be. And uh, 4.0.3 is right now the most recent one. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Android 2.3.3, just an earlier version. When you're dis determining this, when you're creating um, a project, this helps devices that have older versions of the operating system recognize and be able to use your app. So by making it for uh, more earlier SDK targets, then you can open up the audience of people um, that can download and use your app. Although you might be developing with the newer version and being able to implement some of the features that weren't available in earlier ones. So I'm just going to choose 2.3.3 and click Next. And it asks us to uh, come up with a package name. It carried over our application name. Now your package name is typically uh, your website domain name in reverse order. So, for example, dccc.edu becomes edu.dccc. And then the name of our package, which becomes our Java package name. So I'm just going to say, hello, Android. Now, create an activity. An activity is a screen. And this is the name of the screen. So instead of hello, Android activity, Let's say hello droid. Just so that you can see that um, this is no spaces, sorry. That this how this differs from the application name and from the package name. And it's put, putting in the minimum SDK for uh, the version that we selected. And we don't need to worry about any of this right now. So I'm going to click finish. And it's going to build the workspace in here on your computer. I know sometimes uh, if it's a little slow, you may see like a little red X over here with an error. And that's while it's building and saving everything. So don't be alarmed while it's it, if it's showing that while it's building the project. I would just be alarmed if after getting all the way through this, and it saved everything that there was still uh, an error there. Okay, so we've built the project and I just want to give you a little bit of an overview of what happened in doing that process. So in the Package Explorer on the left hand side of your screen, I'm just going to click this disclosure triangle, this disclosure button, and you can see that this is the stuff that um, we have just by generating a new project. So uh, the SRC folder is our source files and you can see edu.dccc, hello Android. You can see where that came from when we were creating. 
the project and then you can also see where hellodroid.java came in. So this is our, our Java file and this created the view that we'll be working with called Hello Droid. And if I expand these down, um, if I double click, it will open up the Java file over here. And the base of our Android apps are going to be written in Java. Uh, let's see, generated files, you don't really change any of that. Um, Assets will be a place where we put images and sound files, things of that nature that our app will use. Um, we'll come back to Ben a little bit later. Uh, resources. These are generally your layout files. So uh, let's take a look at the layout folder. And our views are written or defined in XML rather than using code. So our view is actually in an XML document. So if I click, double click on this, it's taking a few seconds to load in. Okay, so um, it, it took a little time to load in there and it may do that the first time especially while it's loading all this information in. But we have the graphical layout view that you can see here. This is the um, Hello Android view that we have. Um, and some text, Hello World, Hello Droid. So that's the graphical layout. And then down here I have the main XML. And you can see that, as I said, uh, our layouts are defined in XML rather than using code so we can both we can edit our views both working in the XML view as well as the graphical layout so sometimes you'll work in both or primarily just one but it's um, important to start to understand where this information is in the hierarchy of the document document structure here uh, let's see, the other thing, CFG files, we have configuration files and these are sort of the glue that binds everything else together. We have uh, XML resources, we have the name of your app, the other content that is going to be in our view here. Uh, we have multiple screens, like right now we have one screen, but you can have many screens in your app. So these are all tracked in the configuration files. So we'll be looking at these in more detail as we go through the course, but I just sort of wanted to give you an idea of what this structure was and where we start to find things in our uh, project files. So from here, we should I mean, we have a, a view here. This was automatically developed when we created the package. And you can see from this how the information that we put into the uh, project screens sort of carried over into this. So next, I think we're ready to try to run this and see it in our emulator. So I'm going to click over here on the name of the the package to select it and then on the toolbar click the run button. Now it says first of all you may get another screen that pops up before this asking you how to run this as. So you want to make sure you choose Android project and then after that you may get this message that says no compatible targets found asking you if you want to add a new Android virtual device. So what this actually means is that uh, for our work environment, there is an emulator, an on-screen emulator that we can use to test your projects. But there are so many different types of devices available for Android that we have to set up our own virtual devices. So if we have one that's a phone, one that is a tablet, 
one that's an earlier phone, one that's a later phone, one that has a slide out keyboard. We can set up different emulators and test your projects on a multitude of different types of screens. So what this does for you is you don't have to have one of every single kind of device around in order to test them and you can get a good idea of, of how they may function and work on the actual device. So for this course, you don't need to go out and buy any devices in order to plug them in and test them. You can simply use the emulators. So we are going to click yes to create a new virtual device. So virtual meaning it's just going to be on our screen. Uh, the device chooser, right now we don't have any devices, so we're going to close this window. And we're going to, it, we're still in the Android Virtual Device Manager. So I'm going to click New. And in the resources that you have for this week is a link to um, a tutorial on common Android virtual device configurations. And you can use that to set up a number of different types of virtual devices. Now I have a, a Nexus One actual device that I use for testing. And so I'm going to create a virtual device for the Nexus One so that I can test it on screen and then I can actually plug in my device and see how it works on the device and have a comparable standard between the two. So I'm going to call my device name uh, Nexus 1. If I type in a space, you can see that down here it says it contains invalid characters, so you're not allowed to have any spaces in here. So this is just going to be Nexus 1 with no space. My target oh, is uh, based on this the um, operating system, the mobile OS. So I'm going to choose 2.3.3. Um, the SD card size is going to be 4 gigabytes. And the built-in skin for this is WVGA 800. I'm kind of going by the listing that's in that guide, that configuration guide, but I changed the, the target for um, my current setting. Uh, the abstract LCD density is 252. And then I'm going to cl click Create AVD. I may take a second or two. So after a little patience, this did finally create my Android virtual device. So now I can close this. And again, I'm going to come back over and make sure my project is selected and go to the run. The console down here shows the progress. Red will be errors or problems. We'll give it a minute or two to load into the emulator. Okay, here's the emulator starting to load up. And again, it's still going to take a minute or two, maybe even longer for it to finally load in. Remember, it's taking these files and um, bundling them up and setting them up on the emulator. took a minute or two and we're still loading but now instead of the other text Android now we have this nice little glossy Android to look at while it's loading so be patient give it time I'm gonna pause this until it finishes loading okay it finally loaded in um, and you can see here where this information was coming from for where we created it this was the name of our project and um, Hello Droid came from one of the initial screens where we were setting up our project for the view. So it put in the Hello World and um, the Hello Android came from our project name and Hello Droid came in from our view name. 
So that is the basics of creating your first app and setting up the Hello World and to be able to display in an emulator. And what I recommend that you might try is setting up some different emulators in the virtual device. If you go back to Eclipse, you can go to Window and AVD Manager. And once you're in the AVD Manager, you can add more virtual devices by clicking New and filling in some of the, um, the settings. And again, that one link in this week for common Android virtual device configurations gives you some example configurations that you can set up so that you can use them for testing your different apps throughout the semester.